Hey, this is Casey with Casey Studios PNW Surfing, and this is a new special video I'm doing, a discussion video about an article I read a few days ago, um, and this article was on theguardian.com by Alex Dick. I did not write this article. I'm going to put the a link to this actual article in, dis in the description, and um, I am just going to go over the key points um, on this article for this video. So let's get started. Sun-bleached eyebrows were raised skyward when surfing's professional body, the World Surf League, announced recently that a man-made wave on an inland lake in California would become stop number eight of the 2018 World Championship Tour. Next year, the world's top surfers will abandon the coast for the dusty town of Lemoore, almost 200 miles from the ocean, where the brainchild of 11-time world champion Kelly Slater lies at a place called Surf Ranch. So, yeah, I mean, they're saying that they're going to abandon a couple of spots, real beach spots, for an artificial wave. You know, and that's the Surf Ranch. I think everybody by now knows about Kelly Slater's Surf Ranch. It makes these perfect little curls, these perfect little barrels, um, and supposedly it can make just about any kind of wave, but the it's going to be totally different for the World Surf League. Uh, they're going to be surfing in a pool and not in the ocean. It's totally controlled. All the waves are going to be the same, uh, and they they do have concerns that they express in the article that I'm not going to cover those parts here. But they're concerned that it's going to get boring, and, and I don't know how they're going to resolve that. Maybe they can create artificial randomness, which sounds a little strange. But what do you guys think? Uh, this is, you know, I'm not super big into um, surfing. I mean, surfing as a sport. I don't really watch surfing, professional surfing. So... But I do think it's really interesting that they're going to try some in a pool. And there are some examples in other sports, like football, for example. You know, like something simple like AstroTurf as opposed to real grass. I mean, a little bit different dynamic, but they it is, you know, fake grass opposed to real grass. Now here's fake waves opposed to real waves. I don't know. Um, I want, But let me know what you think, or if you know more, put it in the comments. Anyway, let's get on to the next part of the article. The Mechanics of Surfing But many surfers are uneasy about wave pools going mainstream, and the idea of a new generation of surfers with no understanding of the sea. Surfing is about the randomness of the ocean. Chance, luck, wave knowledge, ocean knowledge, says Ben Marcus, former editor of Surfing Magazine and the author of Surfing USA, and the Surfing Handbook, among others. It's not all just mechanics. This is the classic objection to wave pools, shared by almost everyone who has paid in frustration and the beatings that Mother Nature demands along surfing's learning curve. Until now, all surfers have had to do battle with natural forces to find the thrill of the ride. In this sense, the argument goes, wave pools seem shallow and soulless. So we're talking about battling, battling the forces of nature here, taking beating and having to really work for our rides. And this is taking it away. We're not working really hard for rides anymore in a wave pool. Everything, all, We're just getting all the good parts of surfing, just great waves. So somebody who comes out of a wave pool is going to definitely have a different attitude than somebody who comes out of the ocean. Maybe less humble, maybe more cocky, um, or maybe they just don't respect the, the sport of surfing as much. I really don't know. I really love to hear what you guys think about this because it, it's an enigma to me. It hasn't happened yet. Um, there, it, it is there. The, the wave pools are there, but it seems like only really experienced, so, uh, really experienced select few have gotten a ride, like Kelly Slater's wave pool, which I think is the best one. Uh, I've, there's a couple different versions, and I've seen some um, videos of the ones that aren't Kelly Slater's, and they don't look as good, as, in my opinion, but... Maybe they just weren't making tubes. Maybe they were just making a little wall. I don't know. I'm sure it's really fun still. Uh, I don't know much about it, though. Maybe you guys know. If you know anything more, leave it in the comments. Love to hear about that. Um, but, you know, the, the whole thing about these wave pools, too, is 
you know, they, the, the water's probably warm. You know, you don't have to bring anything. You probably can bring boards, but they probably have all the equipment that you need right there to rent. And then you rent your gear, you go down in the water, it's warm. You don't have to deal with the weather and the temperature and the climate. You just surf really good waves. And I don't know how crowded a pool can get. It may not really matter because they can just crank out as many waves as it takes. You know, maybe people will be more civil in, in the wave pool because there's a lot more waves. I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's get to the next part of the article. So we've already targeted six developments that have begun or will shortly be underway. She told journalists recently the WSL is not alone in its push to take surfing inland. Artificial wave parks using the Basque-made wave garden technology, different to the KSWC hydrofoil, are already open in San Sebastian, Austin, Texas, and Surf Snedonia in Wales. Next week, ground will be broken on the wave in Bristol in the UK, soon to be followed by the wave in London. Perth, Melbourne, Barcelona, Dusseldorf, almost every week, planning permission is granted for a wave pool somewhere in the world. So this is significant. It means that they're coming up relatively fast. I mean, they're already happening. They're already building them in some of these places, which aren't the Northwest, but they're, they're happening. And according to the article, I mean, they're really pushing for a lot of these. I think that, that whoever's making these, uh, having these built, are in, they're anticipating them to be very popular. Um, so there's going to be a lot of people learning how to surf all over the world. And I can't stress enough the question, you know, are these, are these people all going to want to surf at the ocean too? Or are they going to stay in the wave pools? And it's not really a question of, are all of them going to? I mean, obviously some are, but, you know, how many? Is it going to be a lot? Is it going to be just a few? I mean, what is the impact going to be on surfing in the ocean now with all of these new surfers? I can assume that, I think we can all assume that ocean-going surfers are going to try out some of these wave pools. You know, it might be kind of fun and check it out or whatever, but it's not the same as surfing in the ocean. Um, what do you guys think? So let's move on to the next part of the article. So it perhaps doesn't help that the wave pool event and the return of a venue in Bali on the world tour schedule forced out two popular events, Trestles in California and Cloud Break in Fiji. There are environmental concerns too. Both Surf Ranch and The Wave are 100% powered by renewable energy. But Matt McLean, a former CEO of Surf Rider Foundation USA, is worried the arrival of a perfect artificial waves uh, might put ocean spots in danger. His best example is Trestles in California, one of the contests sidelined by the WSL for 2018. By opting to drop Trestles in favor of an artificial wave, the WSL has devalued the surfing resources there, which given the ongoing 20-year battle to protect the break from a proposed toll road project has larger implications, he says. Okay, so that's the end of the article. Um, and essentially this whole thing is saying they're making lots of wave pools. They're, they're going to start changing the... The World Surf League, some of it's going to be in these wave pools rather than the ocean. And some of those spots that are no longer going to be surfed in the ocean, you know, they're going to have, they're going to be in danger of development now because I guess somehow the WSL was able to keep keep the, that from happening. I don't know if they used their own money or if they somehow were able to zone the land in a certain way or something. Um, and... So these wave pools are popping up all over the world right now and more being planned right now. And so all of these new surfers are going to come up who learn who are learning how to surf in these wave pools who have never surfed in the ocean and that's going to be their experience, you know. So what's what's the deal? What do you think? You guys think this is going to be a problem? You think it's going to be cool? What are your concerns? Um 
who, what, where, when, how, how you know, <laughs> I want to hear what you guys think because uh, when I read this article, I just couldn't believe it. Like, like right now, like this is kind of the golden age. I mean, I thought the golden age was over, but it's kind of the golden age of surfing still because it's about to, it, things are about to go haywire. There's going to be a jillion surfers and they might all be trying to surf everything or maybe they'll stay in the pool or maybe not. I have no idea, but I mean, what do you guys think? Leave it in the comments below. I'd really love to hear what you think. You know, obviously I shared some of my opinions. You don't have to agree with me. You know, I'm not the most expensive, uh, experienced surfer, but I do love surfing and I've learned from some people who are very experienced, like my buddy Christopher Speakman. You know, he, he's really taught me a whole lot. Another buddy of mine, Peter, really taught me a whole lot. And, you know, I really owe everything I know to these guys. And these guys, you know, they surfed many, many years before me. And, and you know, the funny thing is, is like you're not going to have that same thing, you know, like you're learning from these old-time surfers anymore because you're in a wave pool where you kind of just like, I mean, it's just right there. You don't have to figure out what waves to surf. You don't have to figure out when the weather is good. You don't have to figure out, you know, where to go you just go to the pool and then they're there and then you just kind of like once you get the swing of dropping in a wave you just got it you know you pay your money or whatever i don't know you guys you guys let, let me know what you think i'd really love to hear what you have to say i want to wrap this up this is kind of a long video but um that's okay this is this is a different type of video you know it's good to listen to while you're driving there isn't any surf right now so maybe you're just kicking back drinking a beer let's talk some surf let's talk about the future of surf so anyway, guys, uh, I got a couple of upcoming videos um, in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to do a 2017 surfing compilation, all my very favorite rides. Um, and if you guys think, if you guys are listening this long, you know, if you remember a really good ride from a particular wave of the month, let me know, and maybe I'll toss it in there. I'm just going to go through and pick all my favorites, uh, all the best ones, I guess, you know. <laughs> it'll, it'll, I'll try not to make it too long, but... It'll be fun to, to go through and look through all the waves. And um, I want to do another video about the Ultimate Surf Rig. I got a buddy who has this, this bad-ass rig that's that's all like you can be off the grid for a few days. I mean, it's it's pretty low low key. It's not like a giant motorhome, but it would be a sweet rig for surfing. I'm going to do a little video on that. And that's and so uh, anticipate seeing a couple more videos coming up. And I'm still doing the surf vlogs, and I'm, I'm really digging those. I think they're a lot of fun. And uh, but there is a lot of poor weather coming up this next week, so it um, as far as new stuff coming out, uh, fresh footage of waves and stuff that might not be happening right in the immediate future. Anyway, guys, uh, drop a subscribe, please, if you like this video. Uh, I want to break that 200 mark, and that's coming up. And uh, hit a like, hit the like button. And uh, anyway, that's all I got. Um, Hope to see you guys again soon. Hope you're doing good, and then we'll see you next time. Bye.